Hello, my name is Gretchen and this is Cover Art, a series where I talk about video games I'm currently playing while creating makeup looks based on said video games. As usual, I'll leave all of the makeup I use in the description below if you're into that sort of thing. All right, so today I am talking about Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a 2D action adventure Metroidvania game. Hollow Knight was released in 2017 and is known to this day as one of the best and most challenging platformers around. It was developed by a team of just two people, although now I think it is a team of three, and they went by the name or go by the name of Team Cherry. The game is six years old, but people talk about it like it's been around forever, it feels like sometimes. I didn't realize it was actually that recent. So the game starts off with a couple of short cutscenes. The first of which is showing some sort of change or movement happening into what looks like an egg or a cocoon. It's not super clear yet. Uh, I rewatched the intro and the opening after having played the game for a while and I thought, oh yeah, that is what that is. So it's something you'll become very familiar with eventually, but right at the beginning, you're probably looking at it like I don't know what the hell's going on. After that, you see a character, the character that you're going to be playing for the remainder of the game. And he's like a little bug of some sort. You see this little bug approaching a town or city off in the distance. He jumps down a cliff. You quickly fall down a vast cavern and begin your adventure. As you work to approach the town, that is a starting point for all adventurers that come seeking glory, fame, wealth, what name you. The game gives you an idea of what sort of obstacles you're going to meet throughout the rest of the game, what will block your path or make your life much harder. Things like spike pits, fallaway floors, falling stalactites, because mostly you're in kind of like a cave system throughout the game, just to name a few. Still, it doesn't take you very long to reach a town by the name of Dirtmouth. Dirtmouth? Dirtmouth. Dirtmouth is a sad, mostly forgotten town that resides on the surface of what was once a great kingdom known as Hollow Nest. Here you begin your descent into Hollow Nest to find out what happened to bring this kingdom to ruin. The character that you play as is a nameless, speechless character, though that isn't to say that the community has not created several different kinds of names for it. You can jump, you can swing your sword, although in this game it is called a nail. That's what your weapon is. And you can find all sorts of things to do throughout the caverns and different areas. As you progress further and deeper into Hollow Nest, you'll find lore throughout, friendly and not so friendly creatures, as well as a variety of side quests to get into. Ultimately, this is a game where you can play as much as you want or as little as you want, with the end goal being the release and defeat of a long sealed away creature or being, entity, whatever you want to call it. So mainly in this game, you explore. You beat bosses, you get stronger, you get better equipment, you get better upgrades. Most of the upgrades and abilities you get are just found throughout the world in your exploration, although some can be purchased from different vendors. You start with your base weapon, which is that nail I mentioned before, and that can eventually be upgraded a total of three times. You can even train yourself in the use of this weapon by learning what's called nail arts, by finding the right NPC at the right time at the right place. I make that sound like it's incredibly difficult, but really it's kind of paced with you as you progress throughout the game. The game has a really good way of having this sort of like natural lead to things without just telling you to go to A, B, C, which I think is just phenomenal game design. Now, while you can just bash in enemies with your nail, there's also some long range options for attacking or mid range as well and there's also a way to heal yourself. This mechanic is known as soul in the game. You can collect soul by defeating enemies, which can then be used to either heal yourself or it can be used to cast spells. Now spells aren't necessarily inherent. You don't start the game with all of them and need to be unlocked through your exploration of this vast interconnected world. Initially, you'll unlock the base version of a spell and then that version can be further upgraded by even more deep diving and exploration. So don't worry, the further down you go, it does obviously get harder, but you'll get stronger. Another mechanism for customizing your character abilities are charms. Instead of having something like a skill tree, you can find or purchase charms throughout the world, 
all of which are unique and add special abilities. Like maybe one will make you hit a little bit harder. Maybe you will be vulnerable for a longer period of time after being hit. Maybe it'll extend your nail so that you can hit enemies that are just a little bit further away. Things like that. You can equip charms as long as you have the notches or slots available for them. And some of them even pair well with one another. The more powerful your charm, the more it's going to cost to equip it. So like I said, there are notches or slots for these charms. Uh, usually, sometimes a charm can cost one slot to equip. Some can cost up to four. And of course, you can add more notches as you progress throughout the game. Lastly, as I mentioned before, you gain abilities throughout the game. For instance, while your character might start off with a simple jump, you can eventually gain abilities that allow you to double jump, create powerful, a powerful long range dash, or even grip walls as you are jumping and platforming around. The game is completely open world, but certain areas can only be accessed after gaining certain abilities or upgrades. If you're killed during your journey, you drop what's known as your shade, which is basically a fraction of your health and all of your money, or geo, as it's called in the game. In order to restore your lost health containers, you have to go back to wherever you died, collect it by defeating it, and reabsorb it. This repairs your damaged health containers so you can go back to living a full health lifestyle. And you'll at least get some of your money, if not all of it back. I think depending on the mode that you play, you'll get all of it back or you'll just get a portion of it back. Now, depending on the side quests you pick up or all the optional things that you do, there can be multiple endings to this game. So yes, though you are a nameless, speechless character, your silent choices do matter. So this is a game where it took me several attempts to really get into it because I am not good with platformers at all. Every time I try a platformer, ultimately I just kind of get frustrated and walk away. And that did happen with this as well. Once I got past my own platforming insecurities, if you want to call it that, uh, it is an incredible game and I love playing it. The art style is really dynamic in that the areas each have their own distinct style and the vibes from one area to the next just flow really well together. Even though a lot of the time the design and the color scheme is pretty different. Though there are a lot of overlap with like greens, cool grays, and blues. It can be a little difficult to remember what you were doing in the game if you stop playing for a while and come back to it, as there is no quest journal. You've got a map, you've got your charms, you've got your inventory, which you don't really even manage at all. It's just like key items that get added in, like things that you can sell, but no quest journal. So yeah, you better just remember what you were doing or who you were talking to. Similarly to a Dark Souls kind of game, you have to really kind of look for the lore. Some of it's given to you pretty easily, but not all of it. Some cutscenes do add explanation, but a lot of the information that you collect throughout is actually attached to the journal of bugs you've defeated in the past or just inventory information in general is what really tells the story. You can also get some story from dialogue with various types of characters. Like I said, not everyone is out to get you. In Hollow Nest, you do have some friendlies that you can come across and talk to. So as long as you're paying attention, you can discover a lot as you go. Music is also different in each area. So like I said before, they all have their own kind of vibe. Honestly, all the music is wonderful and it will play on loop in your head. It's amazing how every time my bangs just poof. So that is Hollow Knight. 10 out of 10 would recommend, even if you're absolute garbage at platformers like I am, it will literally force you to get good at it. And it's a fun game. It's a, a really relaxing kind of color scheme where things are not necessarily muted, but like really calming, even though you might be in some intense situations. But overall, I'm really having fun with it. So I actually haven't beaten it yet because there's so much to do. I keep getting sidetracked, <laughs> but I'm pretty close. I could pretty much go and beat it whenever I want at this point. That was this episode of Cover Art. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night or whatever comes next for you. Bye.